of all, God says, don't commit sexual immorality, not because I want to take the fun out of your life, but I want to protect the most powerful sex organ you have. I want to provide for the most delicate sex organ I created you. I want to protect the most sensitive sex organ you have. Your mind fooled you, didn't I? We're pleased to welcome to Fire Tonight one of America's top lecturers and authors. His name is Josh McDowell. Josh, thank you for being with us. Hey, thanks for letting me be in the clubhouse. You bet. Um, you're traveling right now uh, in, in doing the Why Wait uh, campaign and, and ministry, and I'm sure a lot of people do know about it, but tell us, for those who don't know, a little bit about what Why Wait is all about. Why Wait is about presenting a positive message about uh, God's perspective of sex and sexuality, why he says to wait, and it's using every method of um, live conferences, uh, concerts with the great band Petra, yeah. which I love to be a part of. And then we just finished a film on um, the whole issue of AIDS and the age, uh, uh, sex and the age of AIDS and who do you listen to yeah. that uh, really addresses the issue of sexuality. And that's what Why Wait is about. Why wait? And then we give the answers. girl, 17-year-old girl talking to her high school friends who had been kidding her about her virginity and everything else. Finally, she said, I'd had enough. And she said, look, I don't want any more jokes about my virginity. I don't want any more pressure to become sexually involved. Because you need to realize, each one of you need to realize, whenever I want to, any day that I want to, I can become like you. But you can never again become like me. Well, saying that uh, in 1 Thessalonians 4, the Apostle Paul uh, talks about living a life pleasing to God and what the will of God is. And it answers a question right there when it says, if we want to live a life pleasing to God and we want to know the will of God, then it says abstain from sexual immorality. And immediately, you know, kids will say, and even the parents will say, well, that's so negative. You know, Christianity, don't do this, don't do that. Well, the why wait message is that it's positive. And you say, well, how do you get a positive out of negative? Do not, N-O-T, negative. Uh, you get it this way. Inherent or within every negative commandment in the Bible, there are two positive principles. One to protect, the other to provide. And when God says in the area of sexuality to wait, he doesn't do it because he's a cosmic killjoy. He does it because he loves us. And he says, because I love you, I want you to wait because of two positive principles. I want to protect you and provide for you. So with why wait, uh, it's all incorporated around the protecting and the provision that God has when we wait. And then the other aspect of why wait is in when we don't wait, we blow it and just say, well, is it too late for God to love and accept me? Then the second part of why wait is a clean heart for a new start. Begin anew by the grace of God and his forgiveness.
I don't think it's possible for kids to be in love. Oh, no, I'm not saying that. What happens is kids get confused between the intimacy of love and the intensity of sex. And I was with my boyfriend for six years, and we think that was love, but here I am by myself now. Obeying God's principles to wait to have sex until marriage was in my best interest. AIDS will mark the end of the sexual revolution. Hey, you make it sound like we're moments away from some gigantic plague. Personally, I don't know anyone who's got any of these diseases. He was 24. He'd only had two sexual contacts in his life. One was his lucky number. And he's, he was buried last January. Ooh. Ooh. 